We love talking about volunteering here on the show because this show is run by volunteers and we couldn't do it without them. So we understand the importance of volunteering and that's why we're always happy to have uh, Kamara Chambers from Volunteer Toronto. She's the Director of Community Engagement. She's here today along with Partnerships and Outreach Coordinator for Not Just Tourists, Jeremy Landry. Hello to both of you. Hi. Hey. And welcome back to you. Thank you. So we're talking about Volunteer Toronto and then specifically this thing called Craft Your Change mm -hmm. event, right? Yeah, that's right. So Volunteer Toronto, if you haven't heard of us, is a charity that connects volunteers to the many nonprofits that need them around Toronto. And then once a year, we have a special event called Craft Your Change. And really it brings together people's love of craft beer and volunteering. And it's really aimed at professionals who want to volunteer, aren't sure where to start, but know that they have skills to offer to nonprofits. So the kind of neat thing about the event is you get to choose how you volunteer to the nonprofits in the room. So say you're great cool. at public speaking maybe, or you're really great at marketing or PR, you get to say to the nonprofits, I'm really great at PR, what can I do for you? And then they'll talk to you to essentially design your own volunteer opportunity within their organization. Isn't that brilliant? Yeah, it's quite unique. So you can, you can do what you love and what you know. Yes for a good cause. Exactly, and as far as we know, there's no other event that exists like this anywhere in Toronto or Canada or even the world. It really puts the volunteer in the driving seat and allows them to design their own volunteer opportunity. Well, now is Jeremy going to be there with his Not Just Tourists? Yes, Absolutely. What, yeah. is, what is Not Just Tourists? Um, Not Just Tourists is a, a grassroots organization run only by volunteers. Um, we give travelers the opportunity to be humanitarians. Um, the way we do it is uh, throughout the year we're collecting uh, surplus medical supplies from hospitals and home care and every week we gather and we pack them into suitcases that people donate to us and then these suitcases are made available to anyone traveling to a developing country who is willing to take it and bring it to a clinic in a remote area that uh, has very very little. Brilliant. Have people been able to do that? Oh yeah. Um, for the past twenty, over the past twenty years, we've sent about uh, ten thousand suitcases um, to over eighty-two countries. Um, and the Toronto chapter, just in the past year, it's still pretty fledgling. But we've sent six hundred, and uh, we've also sent larger supplies like hospital beds and. Uh, wheelchairs, not not through tourists, but through <laughs> shipping containers. I'm trying to get that and, uh, the carry on. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's kind of fat. <laughs> no, the bed comes with me. Uh, so uh, and um, altogether, we've saved from landfills about 150,000 uh, pounds, just in two years. Whose idea was this? Um, so this was uh, the the idea of um, Dr. Ken um, Taylor and his wife Denise. Uh, in the 1990s, they were, they were cycling around Cuba and they would stop in these clinics and the clinics just had very little. They had shelves that were bare. And so he realized that back home in his hospital, a lot of supplies were being thrown out. And so they started collecting them in their garage and they started taking them whenever they traveled. And then other hospital healthcare workers and friends started reaching out to them saying they wanted to take stuff. And so... Not Just Tourists was born. And these items would be th thrown out because there is something better on the market? Right, so often hospitals will build up a surplus. They'll mm. order more before they've ne necessarily finished what they already have. And so we'll get those supplies. But also for people who are in home care, um, families, uh, the people in home care, either they get better or they unfortunately pass away. But hospitals can't take back these supplies. And so um, normally they'll just be thrown out and they're boxes and boxes, hundreds of dollars of supplies. And um, so now we have uh, those people referred to us. Our volunteers go and pick those supplies up and we repurpose them. So I'm off to Cambodia. I can pack up my suitcase and, and, uh, and, and bring it to a clinic that could really use it. Yeah. They must be thrilled to yeah. see these people show up. Absolutely. We've heard stories of, in, in, say, Cuba, for example, they have tons of doctors, fantastically trained doctors, but not very many supplies. And some of these doctors, we've heard stories where a doctor had to walk two miles in order to get syringes and then make 
really good use of those syringes. They used them until basically they stopped breaking the skin. Oh my goodness. And uh, they'd sterilize them, but still, like, getting fresh syringes, they're so overjoyed by it. Yeah, the person on the other end would certainly appreciate it. Yeah. You know, yeah. And you hear stories like this all the time, right? We really Claire? do. And the great thing is, um, Jeremy will be a craft or change with 20 other nonprofit organizations um, who are looking for volunteers to come on board and help them with the great work they do, just like Jeremy just described. And we can so show up at Craft for Change. Craft for Change, yes. And uh, you've brought a, a board here. What is this all yeah, about? Yeah, so basically, because it's all about offering your skills, one of our traditions at the event is that we encourage people who have offered their skills to complete this chalkboard and take a photo with it. So Val, I'm going to ask you to You want to me to fill it in? It. Yeah, what would you offer a non-profit if you came to the event? Uh, well, I can talk good. Yeah, so <laughs> talk good. Could I say, uh, I liked what you said earlier, you said public speaking? Yeah, public speaking so or I hosting skills. That. Public. We'll just do speak. No, no spelling, just speaking. There, there we go. go. And then you'd simply approach a nonprofit and say, "How can I help you using my public speaking skills?" And then you'll start to have a conversation around what kind of volunteering you can do with them wow. based on your skills. Are, so, is, is Jeremy, are you going to have a booth set up? Well, you've brought some photos of what the Craft for Change looks like. Yes. So, so that we can get a sense of it before we show up. Exactly. So Look. we have the twenty nonprofits based around the room, and it's just a case of going around, chatting to them, mingling. Um, a great thing that happens at the event is um, during the beginning, all of the nonprofits come on stage and they pitch themselves to the audience. So they'll explain what they do in a, in a few minutes, just so you know all the organizations who are going to be there. And that allows people to get a, make a connection. Yes, to make a emotionally. connection. Emotionally. Like yeah. mm. Some people will really connect with this idea of getting syringes and medical supplies to remote uh, clinics. Exactly, and we have so many different organizations coming. Women's organizations, healthcare organizations, youth ones, um, cats organizations as well. Um, and the event is actually taking place on Monday, June 20th, so in a couple of weeks time. It's happening downtown at the Loose Moose, which is close to Union Station at Fronton University, and it's happening at 7 p.m. Brilliant. So you can find out all about it on our website, and also there'll be information on our Facebook and Twitter pages as well. Was not just tourists there last year? Yeah, and actually we found our current social media person, um, Lauren there, and she's been fantastic. She's helped us out so much getting travelers to come uh, to learn about us and take suitcases because we're always looking for travelers. Um, suitcases we always need and if anybody has um, family who is in home care and they need to get rid of these supplies, um, she has really helped reach out to those people and send them our way. So yeah, Crash Your Change was really, really helpful for us. Brilliant. Just in the minute we have left, remind us where and when. I've got Monday, June 20th. Monday, June 20th. Um, so happening at the Loose Moose Bar, which is at Fronton University in downtown Toronto, and happening at 7 p.m., going to 9.30 p.m. Tickets are eight bucks, but that includes your first pint yes. of craft beer. Exactly. So if you love craft beer, the Loose Moose has the largest draft beer selection in downtown Toronto, which is fantastic. So there's lots to choose from. As well, if you drink wine, you can exchange your token for a glass of wine. Or if you don't drink alcohol, you can have two non-alcoholic drinks. Because you want everybody to show up. Exactly. Although the event is only for people of age, of drinking age, so 19 plus. Okay, fair enough. Well, it sounds like you're making volunteering fun. Fun and easy, that's what Why we want to do. Why not? And you're giving your time because you want to and because you enjoy it, and, and that's what volunteering is all about, the spirit uh, of giving. Thank you so much, both Thank of you. you. VolunteerToronto.ca for more details on Craft for Change happening June 20th. We'll be right back with more music from Andrea Godden.